most ashamed of? Take a minute, think about the source of your greatest shame, and then write it down. Dig deep, spare no detail, and then be ready to read it aloud to the room. Now, if you're thinking, what on earth have I gotten myself into, and how do I get out of here? Then you understand how I felt in my first creative writing workshop. (laughs) Write what I'm most ashamed of. Up to that point, I had spent my life writing to escape from myself. I wrote to hide from shame and from worry and from fear. Writing was my disappearing act. Because here's the thing. I had this idea that to write down something true, a thought or a fear or something shameful, meant I was making that thing more real. I was suffusing it with life and shape and agency. I was validating its existence. So I wrote as a way to get outside myself. I wrote to inhabit alternate realities. And to be honest, I think that can be a really valuable tool. Writing can be refuge. Writing can be a wonderful form of escapism. It doesn't always need to unearth our hidden shame or confront our deepest trauma in order to be therapeutic. Writing doesn't need to be about pain in order to heal pain. And our stories don't need to be about us in order to be cathartic for us. They don't even need to be serious. Writing can be pure fun and still transform us. I bet if we all spent the next 10 minutes passing around a sheet of paper and each adding one sentence to a shared story about narwhals, at the end of it, we'd all feel lighter, more comfortable, probably even more connected to each other. Because writing is magic. Writing is a healing power we can harness. In fact, according to research presented by Chiara Ruini and Christina Mortara in the Journal of Contemporary Psychotherapy, writing can be used as a helpful practice in therapeutic practice because it offers patients a concrete way to process their thoughts and emotions to promote healing, self-reflection, and general well-being. Writing makes us feel better. And I don't mean we all need to be writers. What I mean is we can all put a little bit of ourselves on the page as an unburdening or as a revelation or just because it feels good. Writing can be whatever we need it to be. It can be a diary. It can be fiction. It can be stream of consciousness. It can be a collaborative story about narwhals. The mythologies I want to debunk and the narratives I want to demystify are any mythologies and narratives that keep us from expressing ourselves wholeheartedly. Now, for many of us, truly expressing ourselves may mean writing about things that are hard. There is undeniable value in telling our true, raw stories, even the most painful or shameful ones. There's value in sharing these stories so we feel less alone or so other people feel less alone. And there's value in writing them down only for ourselves. And if you're anything like me, this is where it gets scary. Telling the truth. Naming the terrible thing. Letting the demons exist in the world. As a writer, I thought that if I could write my way out of certain pockets of my life, I was safe. Then I became a mother, and suddenly nowhere felt safe. My sole purpose became about shielding this perfect, fragile creature from the world because overnight the entire world became this terrifying, precarious, threatening place. I'd be going to put my daughter down in her crib and I'd suddenly be seized with this irrational but paralyzing fear that I might just miss the crib and drop her on the floor. It's sort of like if you're walking on a sidewalk. You're not thinking to yourself, What if this sidewalk isn't wide enough and I just fall off? But what if there was a cliff next to you instead of a curb? That sidewalk feels a lot more narrow when you're on the edge of a thousand foot drop. And that was motherhood to me. Everywhere I went, I felt like I was on the edge of a cliff. And what saved me, what kept me from falling, was putting the panic and the terror into words. Because there is a profound power in naming things labeling thoughts, writing them down, bringing them out into the open weakens them. A thought is just a thought. This may seem obvious, but it took me a long time to internalize it. An intrusive thought is not a truth. A fear is not always our body's way of warning us against legitimate threats. 
Sometimes our instincts misfire, and a fear is just that. A fear. A fear is not a truth. I had spent so much time trying to avoid topics that felt too real or too close to home, thinking that I was protecting myself by not naming things. Then I went to therapy and discovered the exact opposite is true. According to Kurkansky et al. in the journal Psychological Science, the act of labeling negative feelings has a significant impact on our ability to regulate our emotions and cope with stress and anxiety. This is referred to as affect labeling. Verbalizing an emotional experience, either out loud or in writing, has been proven to reduce our limbic response to negative stimuli and diminish signs of distress. By naming the things that upset us, we soothe ourselves. And that's what writing is. Writing is naming things. It's putting feelings into words. As a creative writing instructor, I have the privilege of getting to see firsthand all of the different ways that writing can help people, how it can bring them together or help them process their emotions or make them feel more like themselves. Writing offers them a space where they can armor themselves with their own vulnerability. I know this sounds like a contradiction, but hear me out. When writers let their guard down and allow themselves to be completely honest and real in their writing, they gain agency over their own experiences. This isn't always easy. Creative expression is an act of bravery, and sharing our creativity means being open-hearted in about a hundred different ways. But that sort of intense openness is transformational. We spend so much time trying to hide our weakness, trying to hide our humanity in a sense. And when we write, we're translating our inner world. We're revealing and celebrating our humanity. What this looks like in a classroom is students sharing parts of their lives and parts of their imagination, supporting each other's ideas and making space for whatever emotions arise. It's creative community in its purest form. And this sort of creative community plays a particularly unique and important role at an HBCU. Young voices need to be heard. And young Black voices really need to be heard. It's an honor to be trusted with these stories. I'm a white woman coming into primarily Black spaces and asking these students to be vulnerable with me. And I am floored by what they're creating. These are stories that demand to be told. Students can write about their pain until it hurts less. Their writing can be a solve for themselves and for each other. They can write their way through grief, or they can create new worlds that provide relief from suffering. They can tell stories that galvanize readers, that demand change, that lead to transformation. We need these stories. But also, sometimes these student stories are necessary because they're just beautiful and funny, and clever. We need joyful stories, too. We need joyful Black stories. Sometimes my students write about omnipotent gods and adorable woodland creatures and hilariously bad dates, because writing can be cute and silly and still be healing. We can write to make the heavy stuff feel lighter, and that's transformative, too. So. You know how I said in the beginning that writing used to be sort of like my disappearing act? Well, I'd like to end with a little reversal of that idea. Writing as an appearing act. Here I am. Here are my ideas. I have a story to tell. Our stories and our voices are important, even if what we're writing is pure invention, even if we're writing only for ourselves. Our words have enormous power sometimes to affect change in the world, sometimes to affect change in us. So I hope you'll all consider the different ways that you can tell your own stories. Write what makes you happy. Write what scares you. Write the world you want to live in. Or take my professor's advice and write what you're most ashamed of. Write to be present, to say, here I am, and boy, do I have a story to tell. Thank you.